Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a mailbag time because um, basically I got a bunch of stuff in and I want to get it open so I wanted to just open it with you guys and I was expecting all the stuff would come anyways next week but it just all showed up basically this week. So as you can see here we got the diatone and this is the end version this is the true x I'm going to be reviewing it and I'm going to put around 40 lipos as soon as possible to make sure the VTX doesn't crap out on us like the previous one because we're using the same exact VTX so I'm a bit afraid here but overall the the, the soldering it's just very clean very nice they use a little bit better uh more of a field of view a bigger field of view lens on the camera here this is just a regular uh, HS 1177 generic one so that's gonna be pretty cool and then we got the motors so that's gonna be pretty cool but when you open this you need to guys know I don't think anyone's actually talking about this well I haven't really watched anyone's opening so I've had this problem before when they replaced the flight controller because the same flight controller as the as the older version so um, what I've noticed is when you update it past a certain beta flight version it won't work anymore or if you drop it down to a certain version it won't work anymore so when you open the box, you're greeted with this thing right here. And basically what it tells you is try not to, do not modify the firmware update or anything, or you will basically lose your warranty. So um, here's this before upgrading process. You should contact them and they'll let you know what to do. So basically do not update it. Don't do anything. Just edit your PIDs and your configurations in beta flight, but don't update any firmware on this drone because it'll just ruin it. So that's a bit... I don't know, it's up to you guys, so um, so that's just something to note here when you're purchasing it. However, it comes with everything, it's pretty good. They give you everything in here. Uh, for your camera, you can modify its settings, some stickers, silicone wires, and just backup wires that are not silicone. Uh, just to, for a set of Gemfan 5045 bullnose prop propellers here, and for battery straps, and some extra screws and your nuts for your motors. Oh yeah, and a Iomoy antenna. This is a right hand polarized uh, SMA antenna. So yeah, that's really it in here. So I haven't even turned it on yet, and we will turn it on together. So just in case it doesn't work, we can all see it work together, really. So this is gonna be pretty interesting. It's pretty fun, it looks pretty sexy, but it's pretty damn heavy. So, all right, let's put this guy to the side now. Let's get to the good stuff. <clears throat> Alright, so recently a lot of things came out, a lot of things came out. For example, these DYS, these are 32-bit DYS ESCs, and they actually seem, you know, the same design of the AirBot, so they're probably like a custom-made DYS 32-bit ESC from AirBot. Um, so these, these should, in theory, perform. So, <coughs> sorry about that. So we have two clear heat shrinks, battery protect, uh, ESC protector, and here's the beast. So this takes a 3 to 6S LiPo, it's a 32-bit ESC, it does have the current sensor. So that's going to be pretty cool. Does it have a telemetry pad? Let me just take a look here. Yes, I think it does actually. Well, yeah, it does actually, but it's going to be possibly very hard to see here. It's that blob right there where it says TE. So that's your telemetry pad, and I guess that's your current. So they have one separate for current. So, yeah, well... This is going to be pretty interesting. So we'll be testing this over the weekend. And this is going to be pretty darn sweet. It looks pretty nice. Um, that's all I could really say right now until we actually test it. And I'll let you guys know how that went. So I did get four of those because um, I do want to put them on a build. And we have, where are they? Okay, let's move them out of the way. So I also picked up three of these. Um, sometimes the Foxier clone, the $20 one, is out of stock. And I saw that Eosheen came up with a basically a new one or it's this is a 800 ccd i don't know what kind of uh, sensor it's using but it's a ccd camera and it does have osd not osd i think as battery voltage but osd as in um yeah osd as in you can you know fix these settings in here so it's pretty sweet it does have a pretty nice fat lens on there so we're gonna have a bigger field of view and i really like that that actually um makes them a bit cheaper since i always have to go and get um separate lenses for my Foxy or the GoPro lenses. So hopefully this will be good enough. So we're gonna be testing these actually, and I got three of them to put them on my next three builds so we can see how good they are. All right, so another thing I got was the combo that I found on Banggood. So this is the Runcam Micro uh, Swift. Yeah, not the Micro 2. So this is just a regular Micro Swift here. And um, I really wanna try to do some light build or maybe put it on a three inch, so it's gonna be interesting. Um, so it's, it's pretty small actually, it's very nice. So we'll be reviewing this also. Um, hopefully it's good. So that's one thing here. And it was a combo with this VTX. 
it's that little tiny 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 little vtx right there so um i just thought it was a good deal for me so i picked up this combo and it was just um yeah so it was good so instead of me it actually reminded me of this piece so i said hey what the heck we get them together anyways i might get them together and what else did i get here here i got ourselves the Eashin TX03. Why did I get this one? I have the TX01, the TX02, and the other ones, but I want to find the best micro that I love the most and stick this one on there just because that 200 milliwatts. Because it's very annoying when I go, in, when I fly in the field, it's very annoying because I do have a lot of breakup on the 25 milliwatt. So this is what this is for. So yeah, and I really do like the TX, the, the Eashin TXs. They have, they're very good. I uh, have not, you know, the, in specific light conditions, I can fly totally fine. And here, what do we have here? So I made an order from AirBot, and I got the Typhoon 32 4 one ESC. This does have telemetry, and I believe the telemetry is working. So this is going to be pretty sweet. Let's actually open it here. And it's very nice. Very nice. So I've already tested the regular Typhoon, uh, which is the D-Shot uh, uh, 600. That one just performed absolutely phenomenal, and I will be posting that video up soon. Uh, this one we will be testing, but probably I just want to stick it on the build, just get it flying as soon as possible. So that'll be pretty interesting here. So this is pretty cool. Hope see as you can see here. Look, we have a current sensor for each ESC, so we have current sensing. So that's pretty awesome. That is that's actually pretty sick. I'm very excited for this one. There's something else that's super crazy. Um, so with my order, they actually sent me a surprise. It's a test version of a new, basically Asgard. But I was actually. Surprise, it's called the No X32, and this is the test version. It's a 20 by 20 D Shot 1200 Asgard, basically. So, this is the ESC, PDB, OSD, um, flight controller, all in one. And it does have, look at this, it's a 20 by 20, so it's for micros. That's just insane. And as you can see, they soft mounted the gyro here. I don't know what gyro is, they didn't give me, there's no specs on it. That's how I got it, so I have no idea. I just emailed them because I have no idea what is what and what is where and what kind of gyro and that's just crazy look so that you have four current sensors and one here now I know they emailed me saying the OSD is not working on the test version because this is the test version it's not the production so um, I really can't wait to put this on something and actually go fly this is just crazy so that's just insane hopefully you guys can see it good so yeah it has some nice fat capacitors there for you so yeah this is going to be pretty interesting. So it is an F4 processor and it's rocking, I think, Cortex M0 MCUs, which will give us, <coughs> excuse me, 48 kilohertz of uh, PWM frequency, which is plenty enough. So, <coughs> so yeah, this is going to be very good. <coughs> this one, I've been waiting to get my hands on this one. What is this? This is a new, basically all-in-one flight controller from Airbot. It's called the Omnibus F4 Pro Corner. And this one's actually pretty crazy. Let me show you why. So this has two gyros. It has that sensitive gyro that's on the Matic F405, the, the all-in-one and the double PDB combo. However, that one's making a lot of problems for people with noisy setups, which is the gyro is getting affected and you need filters. Now this one has two gyros. It has that gyro and the MPU 6000, I think, yeah. So it's gonna be pretty damn sweet. And the best thing of all, it even have pads for the telemetry. So this is an F4 processor and it's just crazy. So, and, and it's very thick. Look at that, let me compare it to something. Well, I don't have anything next to me, but that that's just, that's absolutely crazy. Look at that. It's a 12 layer PCB design. So this thing could handle. So it's an all-in-one and it could be connected to any of the uh, Typhoon ESCs with just the pin here so you don't even have to slaughter anything so that's just pretty crazy so I really can't wait to get this guy on something I have no idea what to put him on just yet so yeah and this is basically an omnibus it takes the omnibus uh, F4 SD firmware on this guy so if you're having problems with the higher gyro you could just drop your uh, gyro loop and your pin frequency and then um, it'll just drop down to the lower gyro, the less sensitive gyro, which is the MPU 6000. Uh, I, I, to be honest, I prefer less sensitive gyros because more sensitive gyros just a big headache that you really don't need, or I don't need and I don't like really. And what is this? Oh, the Typhoon 32-bit ESC, I already showed you guys that one. What else do we have here? 
Oh yeah, I got these. Because this is going to be on my next budget build. This is the Star F4S. We already done the Star F3S. So this is the same thing. It's just an F4 processor and it has a different kind of layout. So we're going to be testing this guy and we're going to be sticking them on a build to test them in real life testing. The Star F3 s now the s is very important because the s dictates if it has osd or not and the osd is very important because the uh usb layout of these two boards are just um third crap really so the betaflow osd really just basically fixes that up for us we won't need this until we need to flash so this is good i don't know what firmware it's running yet but we will figure it out soon enough so yeah this is going to be pretty cool and actually for the next build it's going to be actually pretty powerful uh it's around 140 dollars it's going to be and it's going to be rocking this frame this is the frog light um i love this it's the best um in my opinion let's get a little closer here so i don't know if you guys can see what i see here it's just it's absolutely beautiful the, 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 just the carbon is just sticks out like just unbelievable really so it's just pretty sweet so yeah and what else do we have here all right so that's going to be on our next build with the racer star yeah and i got more racer star uh 20 where are they 2306 s 2400 kv i really love these these are just awesome so this is going to be a beast it's going to be like this and it's just unbelievable this stack in here is just like one stack that's it and then you put your vtx camera and receiver and you're done so that one's going to be pretty fun um what else do we have here I got this guy. This is the Eosheen Mini Cube. So this is for a micro. Um, it does have the receiver and the ESCs and the flight controller. I forgot the specs of this, but uh, we'll be reviewing it also and just checking it out. So I'm really getting into micros. However, I didn't know this. This kind of really irritated me. Um, when we want to connect to it, we have to have this cable with us. But that's totally fine. So I don't know what uh, what micro i'm going to be building with this guy but we'll be building one soon just because i got this guy so i really want to use this guy this is just insane right here so man i think this could be the best all-in-one flight controller for micros and i might even put that as a, the title of the next video when we do this but with like a question mark because i really don't know but it's just a little attention grabber Oh yeah, and uh, they gave us some, uh, this is from Airbot, they gave us two low ESR capacitors, and I think they're Rubicons or Panasonics. Where are they? I can't really tell. Hang, hang Sing? Anyways. So I believe one is probably going to be for this one, for the micro, the little tiny one. The big one's going to be for the, uh, for the Typhoon, because there's no space to put capacitors on the Typhoon. But I have a little secret that I think even manufacturers don't know. If you go to your BL Heli 32 ESCs and you just max out your PWM frequency, they run a lot smoother, like unbelievable, and it reduces noise. So I'll be having that video up very soon to show you guys. What else did I get here? Oh yeah, I got three of these. These are the Pro DVR, Ishin Pro DVR, because I'm going to be doing F uh, Fat Track module testing. And I will be doing the camera testing as well with the latency. So this is very useful for me. I got three of them. There isn't much out there on them. But when I saw a couple recordings online on YouTube, uh, they looked actually pretty good. So I said, hey, what the heck? They're very good. And they have a lot of uses. I could figure out many uses for these guys. So this is awesome. And I think last but not least, I think, I'm not sure. This guy finally came in. So this is for my oscilloscope. And this is going to allow us to actually measure the power delivery of ESCs. So how am I going to do this? So basically I connect this to my oscilloscope and I can measure the waveform of the amps. So what does that mean? Well, that means is as follows. When I connect the ESC, I would set it up into, let's just say idle. You know how in DSHOT 600, the default idle is 4.5%. So when the quad is laid down, it's spinning at 4.5%. 4, 4 so we're going to have the motor and the ESC spinning at 4.5% and then in just give it full throttle in like basically less than a second on the on my script give it full throttle and we can see how long we can measure how long it took the ESC to provide all the amperage for the motor to hit full throttle so we can see maybe for example the Emacs bullet gave the full amps in 10 milliseconds and the, for example, what else? DYS XSD gave it in 
five milliseconds. So there's a huge difference there. Well, it's not really huge, but it, it's basically just the latency of your ESC in sorts of ways. And what, what it's also called throttle response, really. So that would be throttle response. And we can actually also debug and figure out if voltage drops are actually good or bad. Because if they're in phase and you do still get a huge voltage drop, that means, I believe, in my theory, is that the ESC is providing the full amps right away. So that would be very good. However, if we notice very high voltage spikes and very low voltage drop that means that the ESC could be out of phase so it's just like it's just it's basically like a cor it's corrupt in a way maybe that's the only way I could really explain it but we will see this all in detail and we'll figure it out and I think it'll be very interesting and we're going to get a lot more data in for each ESC and I'm going to be revisiting all the ESCs in the house possibly over the weekend and right now I'm going to begin building the cheap build which is going to be this guy it's going to be a $150 beast and hopefully, I'm, I'm curious, what do you guys think? Do you think it could compete with that diatone? So that's going to be pretty interesting. So, and really, that's it, guys. And I wanted to say one more thing. Um, I do apologize for my last video, how I just kept on, you know, I just had a rant about the motor. Um, it's just, it's just, it's very good motor. And um, some of you are saying to script. I really would prefer not to script, but I would put some bullet points. Because if I script, you don't really... I, I can't really express my feelings or express the way I feel and I, I would rather have it be more natural and more raw than like a robot just sitting there you know with his script oh yes this runs this this runs this this runs this yes okay you know and it's just I don't know I don't like that um I'll get all the details I'll fix the way I do it and if I do end up going in a loop I will edit it out I promise you guys but um, I mean, if you, all of you want me to script what I'm saying, then I can do that for you guys. But if not, then I'll, I'll, I'll organize this just the right way for you guys. I'll keep some like, you know, some bullet points where I just go over in line. So this way I can keep it raw and real and good. So checking the time on the video now, we've been out here for like 17 minutes or so. And um, this has gone a bit too long, so um, I'm going to end the video here, guys. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And um, if you guys want to see something first just out of what I have here, let me know also. I'll get that done as soon as possible. But the most thing that I'm really excited for right now is basically the AirBot stuff here. So this is pretty cool. Um, I can't wait for this. This is just insane. Look at it. It's, it's just I'm sorry, it's actually sexy. But there's one thing, <laughs> this is very bad airbot. So when you solder, if you're going to solder here, just be careful because then you won't access the SD card here. So <clears throat> that's going to be something. And yeah, so, so this is going to be pretty cool, pretty interesting, pretty fun, and hopefully exciting. So yeah. Um, and that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. Oh, and by the way, I got Transtech just released two micros, and I got two of them. And hopefully they'll be on the way soon. That's going to be very fun and very interesting also. It's like a baby frog. So that I just I can't wait for that. It's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah, and I got the Emacs 6000 KV motors, the 1106. I don't know where I put them, but I'll find them later. So we're going to probably put those with the new No X32 from Airbot, which is this micro all-in-one flight controller. And this is going to be a beast. Maybe we're going to put it on the turret. That'll just be insane. So, yeah, I really can't wait. But it's a bummer since the test version doesn't have the OSD running. And actually, I don't even see an OSD chip here. So, no wonder there's no OSD. So, they're probably still... This is this is probably going to be re redesigned again. But overall, this is going to be pretty fun, really. Pretty interesting. I can't wait to really get this guy out and flying. So, yeah. Alright, guys. So... That's going to conclude it for this video. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, just feel free to let me know. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.